Hey guys, this is just going to be a real quick video on uh, frequently asked questions that I get as well as a couple of tips and hints that I wanted to throw in here. Alright, so the first and most common question that I always get is what on earth is this mesh from points component? Why don't I have it? And uh, it's very simple, it's just a plugin that I got from the Food for Rhino website. Um, if you haven't checked this, this website, please do. It's a uh, it's really good. You can find a whole bunch of really useful plugins on here. So we've got Kangaroo, Python, Lunchbox, and MeshEdit. There we go. That's the one we want. That's this one that I was just pointing out. Um, it's a super useful tool. It's got a whole bunch of other functions as well with it that I don't necessarily cover all that often in my tutorials, but be sure to check it out. Um, the only other, uh, I was going to say, also say, the only other plugin that I use on a regular basis that you will not find on the uh, Food for Rhino website is Weaverbird. And in order to find Weaverbird, just do a simple Google search for it, and it is this uh, first result over here. Alright, so that's Mesh from Points. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is curves. So I'm just going to create a curve in Rhino, and then I'm going to set that curve, and then I'm going to divide that curve. And I'm also going to divide it by a slider. And I'm going to put down a param view on this side. So now, this is another really common question that I get. Why, if I'm doing 10 divisions, am I getting 11 points? Um, and the answer is really simple. Because what you are actually doing is 10 divisions. It's just that um, a division is a segment. So this is one segment as per our count one, which means that we're going to have two points, one at either end. If we do two divisions, we have one, two segments, and we have one, two, three points. And this continues on and on and on for any number up to infinity. Um, so just, just always remember that your number of points is going to be your count plus one, unless the only exception to this is if you're doing if you're using a closed curve such as a circle. So if I have this closed curve, whoops, and I plug that in here, then that's uh, that's going to give me ten points because my start point and my end point rest on the exact same position. Okay. Now another um, another thing that I'll just throw in here before continuing is. Couple, or just a just a few sort of useful shortcuts. Um, if you if you want to find out where a component came from, say you downloaded a definition off of uh, the Grasshopper website or uh, one of my definitions or someone else's, um, if you came come across a component that you haven't seen, just hit Control Alt and left click on it, and it'll show you exactly where that component is found in the menu. So we can see all of these are showing up exactly where they are. So once again that's Control alt and left click. Um, another useful shortcut is if you right click on an input you can hit um, you can hit F, G or S to either flatten, graft or simplify these outputs and if you hit it again it'll take those away. Um, Another really useful shortcut is if you're copying something, um, just select them, drag them out, tap Alt after you've dragged them, and then let them go, and it'll make a copy. All right, okay. So now back to what we were talking about. We were talking about divisions. So I'm just going to get rid of this circle now because I don't need it, and we're going to move on to surfaces because the principle is exactly the same. So if I have a divide surface component and I also need a surface to divide so I'm just going to use a plain surface I'm going to plug it in and make a copy of my count slider once again I am going to have uh, 11 points and so some exactly the same issue um, so we're just dividing it into two segments, that's going to give us 
three points per each branch. So now where we need to be aware of this with surfaces is where we're, tr is where we're trying to create this back into a surface or back into a mesh. So if I were to do a surface from points or a mesh from points, I'll plug my point collection in and then if I were to plug these in, it's going to throw a few errors for starters. The first error is because I need to flatten the data coming into here. Um, the second error is that the count does not line up. So this U value is not asking for the number of divisions. It is in fact asking for the number of points, just to confuse you a little bit. So all we need to do is just type in U plus 1. You don't need to use U. I just use U because of convention's sake. Um, this is U and this is U. So I'm going to use you. You do not have to use you, but do as you will. And so as soon as we do that, there we go. There's our, uh, there's our surface, and there's our mesh. So now I'll just preview these off. And ah, before we continue on with the next thing, one thing I want to talk about is uh, custom previews. So custom previews are really cool because they essentially enable us to view a curve or any any sort of geometry in Grasshopper in whatever color we want. So if I just throw down a color swatch, I can edit this to virtually anything. Um, what is important to note though is that you cannot bake out color previews. In fact, the only sort of um, the only sort of geometry that can have any color attached to it is a mesh, but once again, you cannot bake out the uh, you cannot bake out the custom preview of that object. What you need to do is you need to assign colors to the mesh, and that can be done with mesh colors. Um, keep typing, and there it is, mesh colors, and so now we get this mesh can be baked out and see and the colors can be seen in the viewport so there we go um, and actually one other thing I want to point out at this point is this is another really common issue let's say you actually before we deleted that we just gone to hide it hide okay um, and then let's say actually no I don't want to hide it anymore but I do want to bake out this uh, this mesh again. And actually, you know what? I will hide it, and then I'll click hide again, so that when I try to bake this out again, it's not doing anything. And basically, the issue here is that you cannot run the Grasshopper solution over the top of a command which is already running in the Rhino command line. It will not let you bake anything out. So all we need to do is just finish that command, or exit out of that command, and then we can bake again. Really simple problem, but happens more often than you would think. All right. So now, what's also um, really interesting about mesh colors is that you can only render them in Rhino Render. You cannot render them in V-Ray or Flamingo or Brazil or any other render engine that you have for Rhino, at least in Rhino 5. I know this is something they're working on for Rhino 6, and it'll be really good to have that functionality, but at the moment you can only do that in Rhino Render, or you can export it to an external rendering software. So if, for instance, I often do these in 3ds Max, in order to do that I need to save it out, so just call it 001, and key thing to note is I have to save it as a .vrml file. There isn't any other file type that supports vertex colors. And so what you need to do here in your export options is change this to version 2.0 and you need to turn vertex colors on. And then when you export that, you'll be able to import that into 3ds Max or Maya or some other application that supports vertex color rendering. Okay. The uh, the next issue I want to talk about 
is ticks tags. Um, so I'm just going to throw down the standard ticks tag for starters. And it's asking for me for a location, so I'll just throw down a point right at the center. And so I need to feed some sort of text into that, and I'll just make this large. Okay, so let's say I want to bake this text out. Let's say I wanted to do a whole lot of laser cut panels or something. So I'll bake this in, and no, that's not what I want. That is a text dot. That is not a piece of text that I could send to the laser cutter. Key difference is what you need is a text tag 3D. So if we put our location back in and our text, we now get a piece of text which can bake properly. Key difference between these two sorts of text being the ordinary text tag is always oriented towards the camera, whereas the text tag 3D always has the exact same orientation. It does not move with the camera. So this can be baked out and uh, sent to a laser cutter, whereas the ordinary text tag cannot. So I'll get rid of those. And now the last issue, I believe, that I want to talk about in this tutorial, or in this video, is Voronoi. I get a lot of requests for Voronoi. And I'm going to start this off by saying don't use Voronoi. There's the trouble with Voronoi is that there's, there's inherently sort of no logic or no sort of purpose behind it. I mean, yes, it can look quite nice at times, and I definitely fell for that trap when I first started using Grasshopper. I used Voronoi willy-nilly, and uh, eventually Grasshopper will give you this warning right here. Excessive use of Voronoi diagrams has been associated with la -di -da, -di da a whole bunch of things, um, an inability to get taken seriously, loss of critical thought, confused and nonsensical speech, because what they also realize is that Voronoi inherently just lacks any sort of design decisions. I mean, it's used, it's, it is virtually a, a cliche of the design world. And in fact, I would challenge anyone who is watching this video, who is considering using Voronoi to uh, to justify what exactly it's doing. I mean, yes, it, it creates a sort of cellular-based approach to uh, to your structure, or uh, it is a it is a sort of efficient sorting method, or it um it splits regions up into sort of equal sized spans based on their distance away from each other, but if you are using it, I would highly encourage you, send me an email, we can talk about it, and I'll try and convince you not to use it, or you can prove to me that you have a legitimate reason to use Voronoi. Uh, if you don't, um, yeah, I will not be doing a tutorial on Voronoi at any point, so uh, that's that. All right. I uh, didn't mean to end on such a sort of somber note, but I um, hope you've uh, enjoyed these uh, tips and tricks in Grasshopper.